This is actually going to be a tough call. My two favorite go-to manufacturers suddenly have two great entry-level roadsters in their lineup, and I can't quite decide which I prefer. I like Hondas, and I like Triumphs, I've owned several of each. The Hondas have tended to be the utilitarian bikes, runabout scooters, adventure bikes I use every day, while the Triumphs have been more, well, garage queens, I suppose. I bought a Trident 660 when they first came out two years ago and loved it. I did sell it after six months, but only because the speed twin I'd wanted all along received the makeover and got the upgraded brakes and suspension I'd been hanging on for. Then I rode the new Hornet last week and thought, well, this is good. Not just another boring Honda, certainly not utilitarian. I actually had fun riding it and began to think that the Trident's two-year reign might be coming to an end. Let's begin with a brief look at costs. Here in Portugal, the Trident is €8,500, the Hornet slightly cheaper at 7800 Unfortunately, because of its larger engine capacity, the Honda creeps by a measly 5cc into the higher annual road tax bracket, so will cost you €134 Euros a year rather than the €62 Euros for the Triumph. Now, this of course is a Portugal-specific thing, but you might want to check how things are where you live, because here the price difference between the two bikes is negated after 10 years. So what are they like to ride? Well, the riding position on the Honda is surprisingly sporty. A standard 795mm seat height, but you're canted forward over the bars and the foot pegs are quite high. I found it cramped, if I'm honest, but this isn't a bike for tall riders. I'm 187cm, or nearly 6 foot 2, and really I'm too big for the Hornet. This isn't an inherent fault of the bike though, and I have many viewers who regularly be bemoan the lack of small bikes. So here you go, a bike for the shorter rider. The Trident, by comparison, is almost sit up and beg. The riding position is less sporty, more upright, more comfortable for longer rides, at least for me. The bars are further back and slightly wider, and the lower foot pegs mean my legs aren't as tucked up as they are on the Honda. So for me, this is a win for the Triumph. Engine? Well, the Trident's triple is very good, but the new Honda Twin steals it. You get 11 horsepower more for a start, which in my book nudges the Hornet away from the beginner's category. I always felt when I owned the Trident that 80 horsepower was only just enough. Another 10 or 15 would make it a really great bike, but then of course it would be competing with the much more powerful Street Triple. That said, now that the 2023 Street Triples are producing 120, 130 horsepower, you've got a bit more wriggle room triumph. So can we please have a 90 horsepower Trident? As things stand, the Hornet has the punchier engine. It's as simple as that. It pulls hard from low down and is very keen to rev. It's much faster than the Trident, the MT-07 and the Z650, its three main competitors. As for the sound, well, that's subjective. The Hornet has the deeper, meatier exhaust note, while the Trident sounds more sporty and is aided, in my opinion, by the intoxicating induction roar. If you cheat and stick on the optional SC Project NCAN on the Honda, then it probably wins, but out of the factory I'd have to give it to the Trident, if only for this added bonus of induction roar. How about the gearbox? Well, they're both beyond reproach in terms of gear change. The Trident has slightly shorter gearing, which means you're changing more often, and the Hornet's taller final ratio will make it a better motorway cruiser. Clutch action is beginner-friendly light, and the optional, but in my opinion, must-have up and down quick shifters on both bikes are very smooth and great fun, definitely worth getting. The fit and finish, they're both very good, depending on the colour you opt for. The Trident has a gorgeous deep paint finish on the tank, something the Hornet tries hard to match but can't quite pull off. All the levers and switches are solid feeling, well made, except perhaps for the rear brake pedals, which on both bikes look and feel as if they've been sourced from AliExpress. But the Trident's is the worst of the two. There are some nice details like the solid aluminium license plate stalk on the Hornet, Bit of a wasted effort, I suppose, in that many owners will immediately replace it with a tail tidy or the well-integrated stubby exhaust on the Trident, which makes the Hornets look ne needlessly oversized. One thing I really appreciated on my Trident were the clocks. An excellent instrument pod, highly legible even in the brightest sunshine, compact, neat, just the right amount of information. Went perfectly with the style of the bike, brilliant, except 
now the Honda's is better. Full colour, more information, and you can configure things like engine braking and quick shift to severity, like on a bike one or two classes above. So a win for the Honda. Suspension. The Honda wins this round too, not because its suspension is particularly remarkable, but rather that it doesn't do anything wrong. It's on the soft side, and when you push on in the bends, a bit like here, you do wish it was more adjustable to firm things up, but overall it's fine, it's good, it does the job. The Trident is let down by its rear shock. It's too soft and seems somehow out of sync with the forks, which is surprising for Triumph, as they do know how to set their bikes up. I looked into changing the one on my bike, but halfway through the research I decided to sell the bike, so I never went through with it, obviously. I have read in forums, though, that the decent shock can transform the handling and ride. The brakes are good enough on both bikes. I would just about award the point to the Trident, as its rear brake has more bite, but it's not a huge difference. I sharpen up the front brakes of my Trident by fitting some EBC sintered pads, but you can almost certainly do this on the Honda too, and I don't want to get into the mods you can do, or we'll be here all day. What about the way the bikes look? Well, this will always be subjective, but I did like the looks of the Trident, at least when it first came out two years ago. Its original design has, of course, lost some of its aura because they're quite a common sight on the roads now. And I'm still undecided about the rather heavy looking swing arm mounted license plate. In comparison, the Hornet is more passepartout, not bland exactly, let's say consensual. What I mean is, while it's certainly not ugly, I don't think anyone is going to go, to the, go into the showroom and buy it on looks alone. I don't think they're doing themselves any favours with the colours either. This white and red model looks nice enough, but the forks would look so much better in gold, or even just plain old black. So time for the verdict, which is it going to be? Which is the better bike? Well, the Trident is slightly more comfortable, thanks to its roomier seat and more natural riding position. It could also be argued that it's the better looking, at least if you want to stand out from the crowd. Triumph is a more prestigious brand. The fit and finish is ever so slightly better. You get superior Michelin Road 5 tires and the front end looks and feels more substantial. And it's also better for taller riders. So what's left, if anything, for the Hornet? Well, the more consensual looks, if you like that sort of thing, better instruments and configurability, a much, much larger dealer network, a staggering 22,000 around the world apparently, as opposed to Triumph's somewhat paltry 750. And most important of all, at least for me, this engine. It's in another class compared to the competition. Dryden, MT-07, Z650, KTM 790. Yes, all valiant power plants in their own right, but they can't hold a candle to this new Honda. Regular viewers will know that I have the Transalp on order, arriving in a few weeks, I hope. It uses the same engine in an identical tune to the Hornet, and I think it's going to suit an adventure tourer down to the ground. To be honest, I wouldn't buy either of these two bikes, because I've already owned and sold the Trident, and I'm too tall for the Hornet. But if I had to make a choice, I'd go for the new Hornet, for that extra power. For my son, on the other hand, I'd still recommend the Trident, as I think 80 horsepower is plenty for a beginner. Let me know in the comments which one you'd go for, or maybe you know of a better alternative altogether. And as always, thanks for watching.